Hi, this is Mark from Wiki Design in this Jet Form Builder and Elementor Pro tutorial. I'm going to show you how to create a pop up like this. We recently had a client request where they needed to have a special pop up where you could choose your different language right here. And then they wanted to have unique URLs for each one of these. So as you can see, if I select like United Kingdom, these right here, this is the label, I just called it UK link. So you can see these are going to be independent links. And then we have something like Germany, the Netherlands. So if you click that, you have independent links right here. And then you would click this button, accept and continue. And then it's going to go into a specific URL. So you could see in this case, this is the Germany one. And then this is the URL. At first, I thought this type of form would be pretty easy to create, but after I started to work on it, I realized it was kind of complicated. So that's why I wanted to create this tutorial to show you exactly how I was able to pull this off. Okay, so now I'm in the back end of this website, and what I'm going to do is show you how I have everything set up, and then I'm going to walk you through kind of like reverse engineering, how I set everything up and all the different settings and everything that you're going to need. So in order to follow this tutorial from front to back, you're going to need Jet Form Builder and then the Elementor Pro plugin. So I'm going to have two links in the description below. Those are affiliate links. If you want to help support this channel, you can go ahead and click those and install and activate them. Okay, so let's go ahead and get the complicated part done. And that is creating the form itself. So you're just going to want to go into Jet Form Builder and create a new form. So like I said, I'm going to jump into the one I already created. And then I'm going to visually show you how I have everything and then you know, how everything's connected. Okay, so what I like to do whenever I'm working in Jet Form Builder is click this button right here, the document overview, and then this is gonna expand all of the different things I have right inside of here, so it's a lot more visual. Okay, so as you can see, the way I have it set up is I have two columns. So the first column is this right here where the user can just go ahead and select the country. And then on the right side, on the right column, you can see I have four different conditional uh, logic uh, blocks right here. So let's go back into the pop-up and show you that that's exactly how we have it set up. So this is two columns. So you choose the country and then this is just flipping in between each one of these conditional blocks, depending what I selected right here. So as you can see, I just have the regular select block right here inside a jet form builder. And I just had the label called uh, select country and then underscore it's a select underscore country is the field name. So that's pretty standard. And then right underneath here, I have the four different countries. And so I just have it labeled as United States. We have United Kingdom, Netherlands, and Germany. Now the value right here is gonna be what's really important because this is how you're gonna be able to toggle on and off each one of these conditional blocks right here. So once you have that set up, you can go ahead and get started on the next column. So if we go back into the example, you could see, like I said, this is just four different conditional blocks right here on the right. And then inside of each one of those is the same thing where we have the select uh, input right here so they can select it and then it will go to the next page. So if I go ahead into this column right here, like I said, I have the conditional block right here. So you would just go ahead, hit the plus button, and then they have this whole thing right down here for conditional blocks. So if you look right down here under the jet form elements, we have a conditional block. So you just drop that in there. And then inside of each one of these blocks, you may see if I expand this, I just have the same uh, select field right here. So I'm keeping everything very organized and labeling everything correctly. So you can see right here, we have the US links and then the form field name is US underscore links. So if we go into the manual options, you can see I have the label for the two links and then the value is actually the URL itself. So when I go into, let's say the US, that's what these two URLs are. So when I select this, that financial professional, that is the value of that link right there. And then later in the tutorial, I'll show you how you link that up. So you're going to want to go ahead and just make sure you have your label and then give it the correct value or URL and then just hit update. And then what I recommend is just go ahead and create the other three of them. So it's the same format. So if I expand these right here, if I just go to the next one for the UK, I just did the same thing. I have a conditional block and then inside that block, I just pulled in a uh, select field and I gave it a different uh, form field name. So on a uh, UK underscore links. And then same thing right down here. I just gave it a different URL. This is just a demo. I just wanted to show you can give it like another subfolder called like UK. And then all of those can be individual pages, however you want to structure it. But I just thought that would be really easy in this demo is just to show you that you can have the, the country code and then the page itself. So just go ahead and create all the other ones right there. Then what we need to do is have it where these only are gonna show up depending on which one you selected right here on the left side. 
So in order to get the conditional logic to work, what you need to do is select on each one of these and then go underneath block. And then right here where it says show current block, um, you just go ahead and hit uh, edit. And what I like to do is show if, and for field, you can see right here, I just have the one called select country. So that's what this one on the left is. I call that field select country and then choose equal. And then the value is United States in this example. So if I go back into here, that's exactly what this value is. So if I go back into this selector field, hit manage items, whatever value I put in right here is how you're going to conditionally show it. So the next one is going to be United Kingdom. And you're going to want to make sure you have all of your spaces and if it's capitalized or not, just copy it exactly as is or your conditional logic is not going to work. And then you go underneath block right here and you can see I have the function show if select country the operator is equal to United Kingdom. So that's just, that's all you need to do to be able to have it where when they choose this, it shows that conditional block. Pretty simple, so if I go to Netherlands, same thing, equals Netherlands, and then of course Germany, same thing, equals Germany. Okay, and the next two things are really simple. We just have a simple paragraph block right here and then the action button. So one cool little bonus is if you have a regular default uh, block inside of Jet Form Builder, you can go ahead and underneath the block settings on the right, you can go ahead and just give it custom padding if you need that. Because in this situation, what I have is this right here where my mouse is, this is all Jet Form Builder from here down, but I wanted to have it where the accept and continue has this unique color background right here. So later in the tutorial, I'll show you how I was able to target that and give it this unique uh, background right here. So that's why I need to add some custom padding to this paragraph section right here because it needed to kind of be pushed over. So, you know, this is just a way I had to style it inside this pop-up for this client need. But let's go back into here and just want to show you that this is where you can add custom padding if it's a regular block inside of Jet Form Builder. Then the action button, there's nothing really to this. This is just going to be where you can change the field label, accept and continue. I didn't really change anything else here. Okay, so after you have your action button set up, now if you go underneath uh, your post submit actions, in this example, you can see I have four different redirects right here. So I have four different redirect pages, and then under each one of these, I have a special condition. So let me walk you through how each one of these is set up. So under the first one, if I go ahead and click the edit action, what you need to do is we need to select custom URL. And then right here, if you go underneath the redirect URL, if you click this wrench, it was going to pull up the four different conditional uh, blocks that we have. So I have the US one, the UK, the Netherlands, and the Germany one. So what you need to do in this case is select the US links for the first one. So everything that's inside of here, let me cancel out. So those US links, if you don't remember, is if I go into block, that's exactly what this is. So this whole entire select field inside that first condition is called US links. So whatever value is getting pushed right here, that's what this redirects gonna go to. So again, when you select the US links, that redirect URL, that's what is right here. So if you don't have this macro in like that, this isn't gonna work. Then the next part of the puzzle is if you go right here underneath the edit conditions, you need to have it where it's only going to get triggered if they selected US as well. So what you need to do is go underneath here, the conditional operator, I just choose or, there's just one in here, and then you click this button to fulfill this condition, the result must be true. So what I did is underneath uh, operator, I chose equal. The select country, which is this right here. So if I select country, that's what this is, US. And then down here, value to compare, United States. So what this is doing is this isn't going to get triggered unless they chose United States. And then this edit action button right here is telling it what to do. This is the redirect. So this is redirect to that value of the very first input right here. I know it's a lot of different steps, but once you kind of logically understand it, that's how this all works. So then all you have to do is just repeat the process three other times. So let me walk you through the next redirect is the custom URL is the UK links. So I clicked on the wrench, chose the UK links right here. And then this condition is if it's equal to the select country United Kingdom. 
So once you do one, it's really simple. You just do the same thing. Then custom URLs in the Netherlands. And then the conditional logic right here is equal to the Netherlands. And then same thing for Germany. So that's it. That's actually the hardest part about this whole thing is linking up all those conditional logics. Because if we go back and I'll explain how everything works again is this right here is the select country. And behind the scenes, what it's doing is it's actually four of them, you know, like we have in the jet form builder, but it's just going to display if I select that one. So if I select Germany, it's going to only show these two links right here. And then this is the action button right down here. And when you click that, that's what's happening is it's listening to what you selected here. So if I chose Germany, what it's doing, of course, is it's only going to rely on this very last one. It's going to know not to trigger a redirect to these three other ones right here. It's only going to trigger because of this conditional logic right here. So if you don't have that conditional logic set up, it probably will not know what to do and probably glitch out. So that's why when you do this type of stuff, you have to kind of do a lot of different testing. I like to go through each scenario, just make sure everything's working and linking correctly. Okay, so that's pretty much the end of everything you need to set up inside a jet form builder. There is one little thing that I wanted to show. If for example, you have this jet form builder and it's not in a pop-up, you might start to get, when you have these conditional blocks show up, they might kind of like glitch or flash real quick. Now it's not gonna do it inside of a pop-up, but if you had it on an individual page, what you're gonna to wanna to do is underneath each one of these conditional blocks, if you go underneath the block right here and then underneath advanced, you're gonna to wanna to go ahead and add this class right here. So what I recommend is go ahead and add that to all of them besides the very first one. So if you, like I said, if you have Jet Form Builder and it kinda of glitches really quick, like it will show all the conditional blocks real quick and then disappear, this is going to fix that. So that's what I like about this is they give you a real easy way and a class to just drop in there. So again, just drop it on each one of your conditional blocks and that will prevent any sort of weird glitching. And then you're just going to go ahead and of course hit save. And now what we can do is I'll show you how I added that inside of an Elementor pop-up and then how I was able to target this and add like a unique uh, background color. In order to get the pop-up started, what you need to do is go to templates, pop-up for Elementor Pro, just click add new. So I have this one right here just called language pop-up. So I'm going to go ahead and open this one up and show you how I have everything structured. So on the right side, I'll show you, um, I found the easiest way for this one was I just have three different containers. So the very first one is just going to be the logo. And then the second one, I just dropped in some dummy text right here. But where the magic's happening is all inside of this main container right on the bottom. And there is a widget called Jet Form. So if you just search for Jet Form, you can see you just gonna click and drag that one in here. So that's exactly what I have right here. And so whatever you chose the Jet Form Builder name, you're just gonna go ahead and choose that. And then you can keep most of this by default. Um, depends on how you wanna have everything, but I like to submit type on page reload. And then you can clear the data on success if you want. You can click that on. So now let's go underneath the cog right here for the pop-up settings and show you that I have a width of like 760, fit to content, I just centered it, overlay. I kept a lot of this stuff by default, but where most of it's uh, gonna be important is we needed to have it where the user can't click right here, they can't hit escape. So they have to kind of force themselves into a green right here in order to get to these pages. So inside of Elementor, they make that really easy. So underneath your pop-up settings, prevent closing on overlay so they can't click out here in the black area. They can't close it by hitting escape. I disabled page scrolling, so if you're on a page, they can't scroll. And then if there's any other pop-ups, just kind of avoid multiple pop-ups. And then that's all the settings that you really have to worry about, you know, in this use case. So now let's jump back into the Jet Form Builder settings right here. And this is where you can go ahead and style up a lot of different things. So the way it works is you can style most of the things that you need inside of here. So they give you a lot of different options. There's tons of different options. But in this case, right down here where I have the button. So if you go underneath where it says submit, this is where you can go ahead and change like how big you want the button and all of that. But there's no way to like target just the button like div container back here. So you will need a little bit of custom CSS to pull that off. So let me show you what I have underneath uh, right here for advanced and custom CSS. It was really easy to get this. So all you need to do is open up this form in a new tab. So let me go ahead and do that. 
So if I go ahead and expand that, you can see right here that we have a div, and then inside of here, this is where we have the button. So what you're gonna wanna do is just select this field right here. This one is good. This one right here where it says field type submit field. So everything within this div, you can go ahead and give it a custom um, background color, maybe extra padding or something like that. But if you just have the one button like that, it's probably gonna be the same class. So you can do selector, and then the class, like it says, uh, field type submit field. And then inside of here, I just gave it a unique background color. And then I gave it unique padding right here, 25 pixels to the top bottom and then 42. So I just needed it to fit inside this pop-up because I wanted to have it go all the way to the edge. So if you look right here, I have this container that it's sitting in. I have everything zeroed out and then I have that going all the way to the edge. So that's why inside of the jet form builder settings right here, if I go underneath uh, input fields, you can see this is where I have some custom uh, margins right side in here. I change the width right here to like 80%. You know, you could change it however you need. And then what's nice is it's all going to be visual. So if you need to change the mobile and the tablet sizes, you can just do that like at a percentage level. And then when you do have this uh, brought in, it's going to bring in all of these different um, conditional blocks and not have them off. So it's kind of nice to actually see all of the different things so that way you can style everything. So if you do see that on the back end, don't worry, once you view it on the front end, those are all gonna be uh, gone. And so while we're in the settings, if I go ahead and I refresh this and open up this pop-up, watch what happens right here on the right side. If I select one of these, if you get this weird glitch when you have a conditional block and it kind of jumps down, what's happening here is Jet Form Builder is kind of adding custom margins to the top of each conditional block. And then that's why it looks weird. But if I go back to the first one, it looks fine. So if you have this little glitch, I found a really easy way to fix this. So if you're inside of your jet form widget right here, and then you go into style conditional block, just go ahead and zero out those margins. So just put a zero in there and then you can save the page. And now when I hit refresh on here, you're not gonna get that weird little uh, margin glitch. So if you go down here, you can see right here when I'm selecting, it's not jumping around anymore. So I just wanted to add that in here because that took me a minute to figure out that any of these settings that you have inside of here in the Jet Form widget is gonna override any hard code that Jet Form Builder might have. So always try to figure out if you can fix weird glitches or jumping around inside of here first before trying to add like custom CSS. And then that's really all I added to the pop-up and underneath my display conditions, I don't have anything. I don't have any triggers or conditions or anything like that. So you can go ahead and change these settings if you want. What I wanted to do is on this example, just have it triggered by a click. So I'll just show you real quick. If I jump into this header right here, I just have a simple icon list right here for this button. So I just have an icon list. And then when you open up that item right here, I just have it linking to a pop-up. So if I just close this, if you don't know how to do this, underneath link, if you click on dynamic tags, you can go underneath right here where it says actions and do pop-up and then open pop-up and then you just choose the one. So I believe I called it something like country. So language pop-up is what I called it. So if I just go ahead and choose that, when you click it, it's gonna automatically open up the pop-up. So now when the user clicks here, it's gonna open up the pop-up we just created. So that's how I was able to pull everything off. And like I said, what I like about uh, Elementor is I'm hitting escape right now and clicking, so the user has to accept something. So when they click uh, United Kingdom, for example, I go here, individual shareholders, hit accept and continue it's gonna to go to the UK version. So I don't have any pages linked here, but I just wanted to show that each one of these is uh, unique. So again, they can choose this, go back into like United States and do something like that. And that's it for this tutorial on how I was able to create this really unique pop-up all within uh, Jet Form Builder and using Elementor Pro. Thank you for watching.